I as of late read the book so great they can't overlook you by writer Cal Newport The inquiry at the core of this book is the way individuals wind up adoring their job It's a significant inquiry to pose since we burn through a large portion of our lifetime working and on the off chance that we don't get a new line of work that we love we pass up a lot of happiness in our lives Writer Cal Newport perceived the significance of this inquiry so before beginning his vocation as a software engineering educator he talked with individuals who cherished their job amazingly he found that a considerable lot of the individuals who cherished their job didn't have a previous energy for it created the impression that throughout the years as they got more experienced and more equipped at their employments their enthusiasm developed this appears to conflict with their customary way of thinking the guidance we hear is follow your enthusiasm yet on the off chance that Cal Newport's discoveries were correct after a prior enthusiasm, was not any more liable to lead you to a profession brimming with enthusiasm than essentially going into one of numerous fields that you're somewhat keen on to back up his discoveries he took a gander at the most recent examination on work fulfillment he ran over a broad investigation by Yale scientist Amy Wears another ski who studied individuals across various callings to see who considered there to be as a calling that they were enthusiastic about and who saw their work basically as an occupation that covered the tabs she found that similar level of individuals overall callings distinguished their work as a calling following quite a while of experience this implied a school clerical specialist with 10 years of experience was similarly prone to depict their work as a calling as specialists with 10 years of experience in spite of the way that specialists were unquestionably bound to have a prior energy for their vocations notably the genuine motivation behind why individuals are energetic about their work is that they routinely experience these three qualities inventiveness control and effect imagination implies that you have a chance to ad lib your work and execute your thoughts control implies you have some state or how when and where your work completes and sway implies your work impacts your collaborators or clients in the event that you go into your vocation since you generally had an enthusiasm for it yet you neglect to encounter these three work attributes your enthusiasm will blur away and you'll abhor your job suppose you have an energy for composing so you find a new line of work at a nearby paper following 10 years of rolling in from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. five days per week the manager is as yet mentioning to you what to expound on and afterward covers your work in the rear of the paper where no one peruses it in this circumstance I question that you could continue your energy for composing so of control imagination and effect are the keys to supporting a degree of enthusiasm in your work how would you obtain these work qualities these three work characteristics are uncommon and significant on the off chance that you need to achieve them you have to have an uncommon and important range of abilities it's essential free enterprise on the off chance that you need something uncommon and important you need something uncommon and important to offer consequently so how would you build up an uncommon and important range of abilities first you scrap the enthusiasm attitude and you receive a skilled worker outlook Cal Newport says that the energy mentality is dangerous on the grounds that it makes individuals figure what can the world extend to. Me if an employment upward, unity isn't giving them a continued degree of enthusiasm they begin searching for the following the thing that makes it difficult for them to gain valuable experience and build a valuable skill set but a person with a craftsman mindset focus on what they can offer to the world they devote themselves to constantly improving in their craft so that they are of unique value to them the team of their company and their clients do not worry about the lack of passion in any a certain moment. They know that if they want to improve in their profession, the passion will fade from time to time, and they don't ask themselves if I have them instead, they ask themselves whether I will like the process of improvement in this even though it may become my decision to start making these videos not necessarily based on a passion I'm sure I often feel a level of passion when I read a new book. But my passion comes and continues through the long and tedious process of making these videos which is why I finally followed this path of creating YouTube writing videos with my desire to to emerge in a profession and develop a range of valuable skills if my original goal was just to pursue a passion I would have stopped creating these videos a few months later when I felt my passion fading during the long, painstaking hours of video creation, yo this. It is a good thing that has abolished the emotion mentality and adopted the craftsman mindset otherwise I will not be able to provide the value that I can provide today. 
The second step to becoming rare and valuable is to undertake difficult projects that distinguish you from your peers and force you to develop rare and valuable skills in Cal Newport's story details an executive design director named Joe Duffy Duffy who worked for a large design firm after college and found it difficult to differentiate himself from his peers, so he started volunteering for tough projects most people had in his country. Your office was not aware of some of these projects that include designing an international logo after working on many international logo projects. Duffy became the main person in his international logo company. He was then recruited by another design company to lead an international logo design group in his new position. He had creative control over his work and more flexibility in his schedule, and his passion grew in the years that followed. He founded a design firm and had a great influence on the design world. Joe Duffy was able to experience a continuous level of passion throughout his career as he took on difficult projects that few other people were willing to undertake forcing him to learn the skills that few people possess through doing challenging specialized projects, develop skills that were rare and valuable in the design world, and the third step to developing rare and valuable skills is approaching your work using principles of intentional practice and deliberate practice are the gold standard for improvement that he developed you may remember famous psychologist Anders Ericsson that I made a peek a beat video on Anders Ericsson's book, which details the entire deliberate practice method. You want to incorporate principles of deliberate practice into your daily routine if you want to become scarce and valuable the best way to do so is to define periods of non-distracted focus where you push your capabilities to the edge of what you are capable of, on him by constantly switching between moments of comfort and discomfort and then getting instant feedback and guidance from people who have more experience than you like coaches and mentors just like you go to the gym and focus on lifting weights to build muscle, you need to approach your work the same same way and with the same intensity in order to build skills, by adopting an artisan mindset, taking challenging projects and then using deliberate practice to improve your abilities, you will quickly become rare and valuable within your team, your organization and the market in fact you will be so good that no one can refuse your request for more creativity and control in your business, and because your work is so good. You are paid well for it and it has a great impact on your co-workers and clients when you open these three work characteristics you cannot help it but say to yourself cool, I love what I do for a living that was the main message I gathered from the book called O Outlets, it's a great read and something I would recommend to someone looking to make a career change, thanks for watching and I